Hey guys, today we will be sharing with you our little collection of what's called the Game and Watch. What is Game and Watch? Game and Watch is a series of handheld electronic games developed, manufactured, released, and marketed by Nintendo between 1980 and 1991. Created by the game designer Gunpai Yokyo. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And maybe it's um, nice to tell you guys a little bit more about this guy who was the inspiration of this amazing device. Before I do so, maybe it's also uh, good to know that the series sold a combined 43 million units worldwide, including 2 million units in Japan and 30 million overseas. And they were the earliest Nintendo video game product to gain major worldwide success. They may seem simple at first sight, but these devices can actually give you a complicated gameplay that you can enjoy for hours. Most of the titles have a game A and a game B button. Game B is generally a faster, more difficult version of game A, although exceptions do exist. For example, in Squish, which is one of the devices that you will see in our collection, Game B is radically different from Game A. The Game & Watch games were renewed between 1995 and 2002 with the Game & Watch Gallery series. Five Game & Watch collections released for the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advanced. They feature the original ports as well as new modernized versions starring the Mario series cast. Now, back to the man that started all of this, Mr. Gunpai Yokyo. I'm gonna share a little bit of his story. This is what he says. I first came up with the idea for the Game & Watch while riding the Shinkansen, which is the Japanese high-speed train. And he says, I saw the salary man which is a term used in Japan to indicate that someone is a businessman, someone that's working all the time. So this is what he says. I saw the salaryman trying, uh, trying to pass the time by fiddling with their calculators and, and thought to myself, what about a small game console you could kill time with? That was the very first seed of the Game & Watch concept. However, at the time, I don't consider it especially an amazing idea on its own, so I put it in the back of my mind where I could mull over it later. As for how the Game & Watch actually came to be, that's a funny story. I've always loved cars and at that time I owned a used import car, one with the steering wheel on the left side. Back then, the president of Nintendo used the Cadillac as the company vehicle, and one day his chauffeur got sick with cold and couldn't come in. The president had a meeting at Osaka Plaza Hotel that day. But there wasn't anyone who knew how to drive a car with a left side steering wheel, except me. So the personnel department head come over to, came over to me and said, I'm very sorry to ask this, Yokoi, but would you mind being the president's driver just for today? At that time, I was the development section chief. So naturally, I had my pride to consider. I wasn't some two-bit driver. So while we were driving, I thought I should take the opportunity to talk about work. And I related my story to the president about seeing the salaryman on the Shinkansen, killing time with their calculators. I think it could be really interesting if we made a little calculator-sized game console, I told him. Up to now, our philosophy with toys has been the bigger they are, the better. The better, the are the better they sell. But I think a slim, small game device like this would allow even salarymen like us to play games discreetly. I made my case and the president listened politely, but I didn't get the sense that he was particularly impressed with the idea. However, at the meeting, by chance, the president happened to be seated next to President Sayaki of Sharp Corporation, and apparently our president told Sharp, who was then the top calculator manufacturer in the world, about my ID for a calculator-sized gaming device. Then, ab about a week later, we were visited out of the blue by one of Sharp's top executives. He seemed very excited, but I had no idea what was going on. 
The president then turned to me and said, the calculator-sized game uh, device you were talking about, Sharp is the expert in that kind of stuff, so I called, I, I called them over to discuss it. From there, things moved, rap uh, things moved rapidly and the Game & Watch soon became a reality. So, now you have a little bit of backstory of how these Game & Watch devices came into being. Now, let's share with you our little collection and tell you something about it. This is Oil Panic. The game is set in a gas station where the leaky pipe is dripping oil. The station helper must collect these drops in a bucket and dump them into his boss's oil drum so that he may take them to the cars waiting beside the defunct gas pumps. The station helper also needs to be quick, as the dripping oil is right above flammable sources that will cause a major fire if the droplets make contact with them. The bucket can hold only three drops of oil. For every drop of oil the station helper catches, he receives a point. He earns a point for dumping one drop of oil into the oil drum, two points for dumping two drops and five points for dumping three drops. As the game progresses, the oil will drip faster. If a drop is missed, if the bucket overflows or if the station helper dumps his bucket on a customer instead of in his boss drum, he loses one of four lives. If the player earns 300 points without any misses, Another boss with an oil drum will appear for 20 to 30 seconds, and any oil in the station helper dumps in the uh, either the boss's oil drum will be worth double points. If the player has any misses at a uh, said score, all misses will be removed instead. This game uses two miss counters, one for missed or overflowing oil, and the other for spilling the oil onto customers. If the player gets three misses from either of those categories, they receive a game over. This is Donkey Kong. The game takes place over two screens. Mario starts at the bottom left of the bottom screen. The player must move right and dodge Donkey Kong's barrels by pressing the jump button. Mario can jump over barrels only if no girder is above his head. Mario receives a point for jumping over the barrel on the first girder. The barrels become faster the more of them Mario jumps over in a single run. If Mario does not reach Donkey Kong quickly, then the barrels will move too fast for Mario to jump over. When Mario reaches the ladder, the player must press up to climb to the second girder and move back to the left. When Mario climbs the next ladder, he will appear on the top screen. Once there, the player can press left to activate the crane. Then the player can move to the right, dodging more barrels, receiving two points for doing so on the second girder. After Mario activates the crane, its hook will swing left and right twice and then stop. If Mario does not reach the hook in time, he will need to reactivate the crane for another chance. When the crane hook swings all the way to the left, Mario can jump to grab it and cut one of the wires holding Donkey Kong's girder, earning from 5 to 20 points depending on how fast he does the job. Mario will then return to the beginning of the level when he cuts all four wires. He defeats Donkey Kong, awarding Mario 20 points. If a barrel hits Mario if he jumps and hits a moving iron girder, or if he jumps and misses the crane hook, he gets a miss and returns to the starting point. If Mario gains 300 points without any misses, all points will be worth double until he does get a miss. If he has any misses at a set score, he will earn an extra life instead. Mario can have up to 3 extra lives. The game ends when he loses all his lives. This is Mickey and Donald. The building is on fire. Donald Duck is on the roof trying to put out the fire as he climbs up the building. Goofy is working the water pump, but if Mickey does not keep after him, Goofy goofs off. The hose is patched in two places. When a big volume of water is pumped through those, uh, the hose, the patches leak, operating the controls so that Mickey, Goofy and Donald put out the fire. The game is played on two screens. The fire climbs from the lower screen to the upper. Donald pours water on the fire from the roof and on the top screen and it flows down to the lower screen. One point is scored for every fireball that Donald puts out. When all the fire is put out, 
15 extra points are rewarded. One fire reaches the roof, it burns Donald's tail. One miss is scored, three misses, and game ends. A water leak is not a miss, but when the hose is leaking, Donald does not get any water on the roof and cannot fight the fire. Operate Mickey to plug up the leak and prevent misses from happening on the roof. When the score reaches 300 points, all misses are cancelled. If there are no misses when a 300 score is reached, game goes into a chance time. Score flashes and all points are awarded at double value until a miss is scored or water leaks from the hose. When the game starts, Goofy automatically starts pumping water. Mickey has to keep ordering Goofy to work, otherwise Goofy slows down and the water slows down. When a big volume of water passes through the hose, the patches can spring a leak, so operate Mickey to prevent leaks. If a leak occurs, water supply to the roof stops. Operate Mickey to plug up the leak and restore Donald's water supply. Fire climbs in three columns. Operate Donald left and right to the column with the fire. One drop of water puts out one ball of fire. When all the fires are put out, one game cycle is over. Minnie Mouse comes out and hugs Mickey. The game continues. This is Greenhouse. The player controls Stanley and the objective is to spray inchworms and spiders that try to eat the flowers in a greenhouse. The inchworms crawl along vines on the top screen while the spiders crawl along webs on the bottom screen and the player has to try to hit them with a spray gun before they reach the flowers. A ladder connects the two parts of the game which otherwise offer almost identical action. The player receives a points for killing an inchworm far from a flower, two points for an inchworm one step away from a flower and three points for an inchworm closest to a flower. To kill the spiders, however, the player needs to spray them closest to a flower. If sprayed further away, the spiders back away one step, giving the player a point. When the player kills a spider, they earn three points. As the game progresses, the inchworms and spiders will move faster. If an inchworm or spider reaches a flower, the flower will die, earning the player a miss. If the player gets 300 points without any misses, all points will be worth double until the player does get a miss. If the player has any misses at said score, all misses will be cancelled instead. When the player gets three misses, they receive a game over. This is Donkey Kong 2. Donkey Kong is chained to the floor on the top of the upper screen by several locks. Donkey Kong Jr. must hit a key up to the top screen and then progress through the bottom screen, jumping over snap jaws and sparks much as Mario jumped over barrels in Donkey Kong. Every time Donkey Kong Jr. jumps over a snap jaw or spark, he receives a point. When he reaches the top screen, he must hit the key right next to the one of the locks, avoiding birds along the way, then climb up the chain that trails below the lock. Once he reaches the top, he uses the key to open the lock, earning from 5 to 15 points depending on how fast he does the job. Then he must progress back down to the bottom to hit a new key up, and so on. When Donkey Kong Jr. opens all four locks, he frees Donkey Kong, awarding the player 20 points. If Donkey Kong Jr. after opening a lock has no misses when he returns to the starting position and throws up a key, he will earn 5 points. If a snap jaw, bird or spark hits Donkey Kong Jr., he loses a life and the key returns to the starting position. If Donkey Kong Jr. reaches 300 points without any misses, the points will be worth double until he does get a miss. If he has any misses at set score, he will receive an extra life instead. The game ends when he loses 3 lives. This is Mario Brothers. Mario must first take a pallet out of the machine on the lowest level and place it on the lowest of 5 conveyor belts running in alternating directions. A barrel is placed on the pad pallet as it passes through the divider between the screens and continues on until it reaches the end of the conveyor belt. Here, Luigi must take the package and place it on the above conveyor belt, which takes it back to Mario, who sends it back to Luigi on the next conveyor belt. Luigi sends it back again and Mario has to put it on the highest conveyor belt. 
where it is sealed while passing through the column. Luigi then throws the sealed package onto the delivery truck, which event eventually gets filled up and leaves, giving Mario and Luigi a brief break until it returns empty. The player er earns a point for every pallet moved to another conveyor belt and for every package thrown onto the truck. They earn 10 points after every time the truck is fully loaded with 8 packages. The conveyor belts get faster and the number of pallets on the screen increases as time goes by, forcing Mario and Luigi to scramble up and down the ladders in order to prevent the packages from falling off the ends of the belts. Each time a pallet or package falls off, the Mario brothers get yelled at by their boss, giving the player a miss. If the player manages to score 300 points without a single miss, the points that are earned will be doubled until the player does get a miss. If the player earns a miss before scoring 300 points, all misses will be cleared instead. After 3 misses, the player receives a game over. This is Rain Shower. A dark cloud covers up the sky, then it precipitates. The player must help a boy move the clothesline from getting his hand clothes wet. The player receives a point every time a raindrop passes a clothesline without hitting a shirt. When the player reaches 100 points, it stops raining for a brief moment before raining again, and the player receives 10 points. As the player progresses in the game, the raindrops will fall faster. If a raindrop hits a shirt, the boy will angrily wring it out and the player will get a miss. If the player gets 300 points without any misses, the points will be worth double until the player does get a miss. If the player has any misses at said score, all misses will be removed instead. When the player gets 3 misses, they receive a game over. In game B, however, which is the more difficult uh, setting, crows appear and sometimes move the clothesline. This is Lifeboat. A fire breaks out on a luxury passenger liner, forcing the passengers to abandon ship. The player needs to place a lifeboat below them to rescue them. However, only four passengers can fit into the lifeboat, so rescuers must pull it towards the shore on either side to offload the passengers. The player receives a point for every passenger who enters the lifeboat and for every passenger delivered safely to shore. As time passes, the passengers will move faster. If a passenger misses the lifeboat or the player tries to catch one in a full lifeboat, the passenger will fall into the water and gets eaten by a shark, and the player will receive a miss. If this happens at the same time as a passenger is being unloaded to shore, the player will not receive any points. If the player reaches 300 points without any misses, the points will be worth double until the player does get a miss. If the player has any misses at said score, every miss will be cleared instead. When the player gets 3 misses, they receive a game over. Game A features 2 lifeboats, one on each side, while game B features one which can go to either side. This is Pinball. The flippers and a few other objects are positioned on the bottom screen. The plunger and the extra balls can also be viewed down there. On the upper screen is some bumpers and other attractions, as well as the exit for the ball when the plunger is initiated. When the ball reaches the top of the bottom screen, it will emerge on the top screen. The one button will control the right button, while the two button will control the left one. There are two modes in the game including Game A and Game B. Game A has three balls and Game B has only one ball. In Game A, no extra balls are rewarded if you earn high scores. Though in game B, you'll receive extra balls when you reach 10,000 and thereafter every 20,000 points you receive, you'll earn an extra ball. In game B, you can only have 3 balls available at once. The player will earn 500 points when they strike a bumper at the bottom of the top screen. The maximum amount of points a player can accumulate is almost 1 million. Once it reaches that extremely challenging to get score, it will restart back to zero. The player will lose a ball if it gets into the left alley or into the center. In game A, the game will be over when the player loses three balls, while in game B, the game will end when all of the balls are gone. 
After the game is over, the player can choose to play again, though if he doesn't, the time will be displayed after 4 minutes. This is Squish. The next title with funny characters at its game's play center was Squish. Controlling Ziggy the Maze Man, players had to fight their way through a crazy yet deadly labyrinth. Grumpy, who definitely lived up to his name, was in control of this labyrinth and kept trying to push Ziggy into its corners or dead ends where he was in danger of being squished by the maze's moving walls. The idea to build a constantly changing maze from various LCD elements was simply brilliant and later reused for many other titles. In game B, players had to additionally eliminate four maze bugs sitting in the corners of the lower screen in order to proceed to the next phase. The controls using two rocker switches were hard to get into, but grew increasingly easier to handle as you played. A great game which thanks to its many possible level layouts managed to keep players excited for a very long time. This is Save Buster. Save Buster is an explosive game in which players had to protect a bank safe from the criminal endeavors of the ill-minded Willy Bomber. Carrying a bucket to catch Willy's bombs, players took control of the bank's guard, hurrying from one explosive charge to the next in order to catch and then drop them into a bomb disposal corner on the left. Inside this vent was a burning torch that went up with every explosion taking place if too much time passed between detonations, it descended back towards the ground. If players, however, managed to catapult it up all the way to Willy, he burned himself and fell off the roof, taking all his bombs with him. Eliminating Willy scored players extra points and meant the safe was secure. Safe Buster was a brilliant game that still sold at very reasonable prices. This is Gold Cliff. First sight, Gold Cliff may look rather unimpressive, but that impression will change quickly once you really get into it. The game required players to use platforms appearing on both screens to climb to the top of an ancient ruin and claim its legendary treasure. Gold Cliff consisted of numerous levels players had to master, and to make sure they could actually do it, Nintendo provided them with a continue function for the game. Accessible via the new continue button, replacing the usual game B button. Gold Cliff was the first Game & Watch to ever use this function, thanks to its LCD raster which made sure levels looked different every time you played, the game managed to keep the players exi excited for a very long time. Collectors who don't own the hand uh, held yet, but would definitely like to get it, should take their time and choose one in good condition, as there are still many auctions offering versions of the title a very acceptable prices. Gold Cliff was released in 1988, making it the last game of watch to be released before the Game Boy. This is Zelda. Zelda was the last game in the multi-screen series and impressed players with its complex gameplay. During the game, Link, the title's main character, received many different items that were supposed to help him free Princess Zelda from the evil dragons. There were healing potions, a map to show how the labyrinth is arranged, a tomahawk thrice as effective against dragons as Link's sword and hearts which could refill Link's energy. Thanks to the continue function, players could pause and continue their adventure as they pleased. Once Link had found all parts of the Triforce and saved the princess, it was possible to start yet another quest by pressing the attack button in which the enemies moved slightly faster. Zelda was the perfect example for how complex Game & Watch titles should be, and what futures LCD games of the time already had. Still unclear though, why was the Game & Watch Zelda omitted from the Hyrule Historia? This is Mario's Cement Factory. There are two drivers, each in a truck under a container. Mario earns a point each time he empties a load of cement from the upper hopper and two points each time he empties a load from the lower hopper. Each container can hold only three loads of cement. Allowing the containers to overflow causes cement to spill down on to the workers, hurting them and giving Mario one miss. 
Falling off an elevator platform also earns a miss, as well as touching the very top of the screen and getting crushed by an elevator platform, or touching the very bottom and getting shocked by the floor of the elevator. In all versions of the game, there is an area on the lowermost portion of the elevator that Mario can use to save himself from touching the very bottom and getting shocked. On the tabletop and the Game Boy Gallery versions, there is a similar area on the uppermost portion of the elevator. This does not appear on any other version of the game. If Mario gets 300 points without any misses, the points will be worth double until he does get a miss. If he has any misses at said score, all misses will be cleared instead. When he receives three misses, the game is over. This is Donkey Kong 3. Donkey Kong 3 was the next title in the innovative two-player series. The character Stanley the Bugman has already been featured in Greenhouse. But this time he's joined by Donkey Kong. In a green battle, Stanley and the giant monkey both try to use hand pumps to spray chemicals onto their opponents and thus get the better of them. It was, however, not the chemicals themselves that harmed them, but the bees attracted by them. In order to make the fight even more challenging, the pumps could only hold three units of the dangerous insectide. After using them up, you had to refill your unusual weapon which would take a while for the drops to fall. While you were thus busy, your opponent would have more than enough time to continue chasing the bees into your territory, meaning you had to carefully plan your refilling and spraying in order to win. The game required players to show tactical skills, fast reactions and concentration. No matter whether you played alone or with a friend, Donkey Kong 3 was great fun to play. Like in the other two titles of the series, a one-player game could even be paused by pressing a button. Brand new versions of the game from old stocks are still auctioned off from time to time at reasonable prices.